This summer, I will be traveling to Reservus Lascularius to study anti-predator behaviors of geminoles, specifically if sleep position has an effect on the ability to avoid predation. My name is Alex Waite. I am a 21-year-old environmental and field biology major at Ohio Northern University. I'm interested in fishing, photography, and herping anywhere I can. These are some pictures I took in South Carolina I am particularly proud of. I'm excited to bring my passion for nature and photography to Ecuador this summer. Anoles are a highly diverse group of squamates, from the family Dactyloidae. They exhibit a vast array of life histories and morphologies. Anoles also interact socially and are typically abundant in their ranges. This is why they are excellent study organisms for behavioral ecology research. Anolis gemosus, O'Shaughnessy's anole, also known as the gem anole, is common on the Pacific slopes of the Andes Mountains in Ecuador and Colombia at elevations from around 1,300 to 1,500 meters. The gem anole grows to around 8 inches and is green. Its uh, males are distinguishable by dewlaps which have white stripes and often transition between blue and saffron. Geminoles ambush insects primarily for food. Likewise, they rely on cryptic coloration to avoid predation during the day and at night. But at night, geminoles sleep out in the open on flimsy grass and leaves of trees. A particular behavior of these anoles is sleep site fidelity, in which they return to the same piece of vegetation every night to sleep. Since we know Anolis gemosus is sleep site fidel, I pose the question, does this behavior improve fitness? Disturbed sleeping anoles need to be able to avoid nocturnal predation, even if they are cryptic and motionless. I hypothesize that sleep position influences efficacy to avoid predation of sleeping geminoles. A sleeping geminole will be positioned in one of three ways. Longitudinally pointed toward the tip of the vegetation, longitudinally pointed toward the base of the vegetation, which could be a branch or the ground. They could also be positioned perpendicular uh, to the longitudinal axis of their sleep substrate. My study will occur when the sun goes down and the geminoles go to their respective sleep site. We will be conducting a seek and search survey to look for sleeping geminoles. Once we have announced an observation, we will record sleep substrate type and sleep position. This is when we will disturb the sleeping anole, eliciting a predatory evasion response. Using a custom ranking system, I can quantify the efficacy for sleeping geminoles to avoid predation. I will score the escape response from 0 to 3, where a 0 would be no response from initial disturbance, and a 3 would be an observed geminole individual that is unapproachable without eliciting a response. I predict most anole individuals will sleep along the longitudinal axis of their sleep site with their heads pointed toward the base of the vegetation. I believe this position will allow sleeping geminoles to escape to safety more than if they were to leap from the tip of their substrate. Regardless, sleep is hypothesized to be a cryptic behavior. By limiting movement, an individual can limit detection by aerial sight predators like the cloud forest pygmy owl, and by sleeping on the upturn vegetation, they limit their detection from terrestrial predators like coatis or potentially invertebrates. I look forward to this upcoming adventure to Ecuador. I know I'm going to see a lot of cool things, meet a lot of cool people, and hopefully obtain an appreciation for all of Ecuador's natural beauty growing ever closer to the heart of Mother Nature.